Didi Kalra and welcome back to my channel which is called 5 Minute Economics where I teach economic concepts in a span of just 5 minutes. The topic for today is macroeconomic paradox. So basically guys, let me ask you a question that what do you think what are savings? Are they good or are they bad for the economy? If all the people save, then will it be good? By the way, even if we switch to capital intensive technology, do you think it will be a good move? Don't you think people will lose on jobs? Well, to know more about this concept, stay tuned and watch out my video, which is Macroeconomic Paradox, where I'll be talking with you all you need to know about this concept with a little bit of introduction to macroeconomics and what are paradoxes basically. So yeah, let's get started. Also guys, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel in case you haven't already and do follow me on Instagram at 5 Minute Economics. So before moving on to the macroeconomic paradoxes, let me explain you a little about what basically is macroeconomics. So guys, back in 1933, Ragnar Frisch was the first person to have used this word, this term called macroeconomics. Before 1933, there was a concept of a purely capitalist economy. Everyone thought that there is an invisible working of in hand, which basically would solve all the problems in the economy. Only it was when during 1929 to 33, during the Great Depression time, people realized that no, there are some macroeconomic problems. There are problems like mass unemployment. There are huge other problems which were being faced and that is when they actually brought in this concept later on of course jm keynes who is very famous he was the one who actually brought in this concept in more details and uh, the detail and discussed the you know problems about macroeconomics um macro as the word says it all guys that it only if you talk about just the word macro it means whole or it means big right when we talk about micro we talk about small or individual level so whenever we are doing a microeconomic study we are doing the study of an individual or you know when we are doing about macroeconomic study we are talking about the whole level so for example this is also known as the study of aggregates or study of averages so basically guys what happens is when we are going to study about the personal income of one person okay that's only one person one individual we are studying off that uh, so then we are dealing with the microeconomic concept but when we have to actually study the economic problem then we definitely have to look at the macro level micro level wouldn't help us at that time so when we are studying like the national income that is a macroeconomic concept in fact if i tell you most of the concepts in economics what you've heard of you know like the fiscal policy the monetary policy policy, be it inflation, deflation, unemployment, all these concepts are macro level concepts. They are under the concept, under the study of macroeconomics. So I hope you're a little bit clear with what actually does macroeconomic mean. So now guys, let me first explain you what is the actual literal meaning of a paradox. So paradox basically means an absurd or a contradictory statement. For example, um, let me give you this example like Spending money is saving. Like, isn't it weird or absurd? You can either spend money or you can save it, right? How can you do both, right? Or maybe an absurd statement like waking is dreaming. Do you think if you're waking up dreaming, like how can you combine both the things which are impossible? So that is what basically the literal meaning of paradox is. Uh, is now let me come to macroeconomic paradoxes which actually is our main topic so as i told you right now that macroeconomics is the study of aggregates so basically we combine little 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 microeconomic units and then they, we actually uh, you know formulate our macroeconomic unit but that is not always how it is you know if you do that you might just not have the actual or the correct solution why so because what is true to an individual might not be true for an economy. Isn't it true? You might be happy with, you know, maybe not paying taxes. But for the economy, if we all don't pay taxes, don't you think how will the economy function? So, you know, what at the micro level might be good. But when we come to the macro level, it might not be true. So that is when we have a macroeconomic paradoxes. What applies to a particular unit might not apply to the economy. So, for example, maybe you just you know, not even look at macroeconomic concept. You just look at your own self or maybe your friend is very happy visiting Dubai. Ten other friends are happy. But when we have a total solution, maybe you are not happy. Maybe the others are not happy. Only three, four people are happy. So, you know, when we look at the big picture, when we look at the macro level, 
maybe some people want to go to another place so we cannot formulate the solution similarly what you know a particular unit something for that unit a particular firm which is working it might be good for that firm whatever the you know policies are but that might not be true for the whole economy that might be not good for the whole economy so that is what basically the macroeconomic paradoxes are so now moving ahead to our actual paradoxes the first one being paradox of savings so guys i just asked you right in the beginning of the video are savings good or bad did you think it the answer till now so yes for an individual level in fact savings or thrift is a very good thing we all in fact right from you know you know uh, childhood level we are you know we are taught to save money right in our piggy bank so saving is such a good thing it is in you know advocated also that we one must save for contingencies for future for a lot of other things right but if everyone imagine in an economy everyone starts saving and no one invests don't you think there is so much leakage if you're if you're confused with the word leakage then go and watch out my circular flow of uh, income um, you know video but right now concentrate what on what on you know i'm talking about so basically guys if everyone starts saving what will happen the economy will go down because we will extract the you know the flow the extra money which is flowing in the economy there is no money supply in the economy if we all start saving and not investing so isn't saving a paradoxical situation what is true for an individual what is good for an individual is not good for the whole economy secondly technology paradox so you know often at times we are told that for you know um, our firm to do well we should have a more capital intensive technology we will save on so much you know money which we pay to the labor if we get a good capital machine you know it will be even faster the work will be done faster better right isn't it but in a labor surplus economy where there is lot of labor and if we start advocating this you know start having lot of capital intensive technology don't you think many people will lose on their jobs and that will create a problem of unemployment in the economy yes so this is also a paradoxical situation where technology can bring a problem in the economy when there are lot of people and we switch to capital intensive technology coming to our next paradox which is bank withdrawals So guys we all know that you know we've deposited money in the banks and we all know that we all don't go and withdraw the money at the same time right that is why banks further go and channelize that money in fact you can watch out my video on credit creation where i've explained the whole process that how by that little money which people uh, you know deposit in the banks banks create a greater amount of money so come back to this topic so if one or two people or maybe even few people they withdraw money from the bank on the same day that's not a problem right but if all the people who've deposited the money in the banks they go and start you know withdrawing money that very same day would it create a problem at the macro level yes it would so that is what basically uh, the third paradox of macroeconomic is that you know maybe what is true for the individual level might not be true or good for the whole economy how will the bank give money to everyone because bank has further lent the money ahead so that will be a problem and coming to a last paradox which is which is a very important paradox is money wage cut paradox so basically guys the classical economists those who were from the previous first school of th economic thought they had said that you know in a labor surplus economy if uh, there is a problem of unemployment how can we solve it they said by cutting the wages people more people will be employed and we can you know solve the problem very easily but further when we actually examine this this will lead to a very paradoxical situation how now let, let us see over here guys when wages fall now people's wages are cut okay at that time don't you think the purchasing power of the people whose wages are cut is gone down obviously now less money they are receiving less wages they are receiving so less purchasing power basically less of aggregate demand and we know when aggregate demand falls there will be a decline in the output and employment so actually the thing the cutting down of wages which was thought to be a solution to the problem of unemployment here at the macro level it will actually cutting down of wages will actually lead to further more unemployment so that will lead to a paradoxical situation so this is all basically macroeconomic paradoxes or also known as the fallacy of composition which tells us that what is true for an individual level is not true at the macroeconomic level so these are all the macroeconomic paradoxes guys i hope this video was useful for you thank you so much for watching this video and i'll see you in the next video pretty soon